The Word of God that I've chosen to share with you this morning is taken from the second scripture reading that Pastor Welmer just shared with you. I share with you at verse 4. God chose us to be His sons and His daughters. This is the Word of God before us this morning. Please be seated. Years ago, a pastor advertised on a certain Sunday that he was going to preach on the topic, the person in this church whom I would most like to see in hell. Wow. You can imagine the anticipation that that sermon had in that church. When the day finally came, there was a huge crowd gathered in the church. People who hadn't been to church for years made sure they weren't going to miss that Sunday. Well, as the pastor started his sermon, amazingly, he mentioned the person in their church whom he most wanted to see in hell. It was a Sunday school teacher in the church. And the pastor then gave this reason. He said, the reason I chose her is because she is such an amazing Christian that after two weeks, everyone in hell would come to believe in Jesus. Wow. Can you imagine being the person whom the pastor chose to be the one he most liked to see in hell? At first, she was obviously very upset. But then when she came to find out the reason why the pastor chose her, well, then she probably felt really honored, didn't she? It's nice to be chosen for things, isn't it? It's nice to be able to receive an award at, at school or at church or at your job for something you've done well, right? Well, here in God's Word before us this morning, the Apostle Paul talks about a group of people who have been chosen by God for a very special blessing. These people, Paul says, have been chosen to be sons and to be daughters of God. What Paul is talking about here are people who believe in Jesus. Paul is saying here that all believers in Jesus as their Savior from sin and death, have been chosen by God to be His sons and to be His daughters. Wow, what an honor. What a blessing, right? I wonder, I wonder what it would be like if all of us really behaved as sons and daughters of God. Can you even imagine how different this world would be we'd all be living with the same common purpose for our lives. We'd all be living with meaning for our lives here on this earth. What would that kind of look like? Well, I can imagine that it would look like having these three things. First of all, I believe we would all have the same moral code to follow we'd all be following the same rules of God in our lives. And our lives would be so much better. Now I know you're probably wondering how rules can give meaning and purpose to your life. So let me explain it this way. A study was done to see if rules and boundaries would make children feel more or less emotionally healthy. And so what they did in this study is they built a playground and they put no fence around the playground. The children could run all over. They could run anywhere they wanted because there were no fences. But you know what? Instead of feeling freer, the children actually were more cautious and more tentative when they played in that playground. They didn't run as fast and they didn't have as much fun as people thought they would. No, amazingly, it was when the fences were put up around the playground, that's when the children ran faster. That's when the children had more fun playing. The fences actually made the children feel more safe and healthy. 
God gives us some important rules in the Bible to follow, doesn't he? We call those rules the Ten Commandments. These Ten Commandments give meaning. They give purpose to our lives here on this earth. Because as we follow these rules from God, we do have more satisfying lives here on this earth. We are happier people. We are freer Christians. So we all would have this moral code to follow. Then secondly, to find meaning and purpose for our lives, we'd all have a cause to serve. What would that cause be? Well, the cause would be that more people would be in heaven. That cause would be that more people would come to know Jesus as their Savior, the one who forgives every one of their sins, the one who takes away the fear of dying and gives to them the assurance that they will have eternal life with him in heaven. Years ago, Amy Grant was visiting with her mother who was suffering really badly from Alzheimer's. And after finishing her visit, Amy said, Mom, I have to go and sing now. And her mother asked her, Amy, do you sing? And Amy said, oh, sure, Mom, you know, I sing and I write songs. And her mother said, Amy, make sure that you sing something that matters. Wow, I love that. Make sure you sing something that matters. Amy Grant does sing songs that matter. She sings many wonderful Christian songs. I know that I've been blessed, and I know you've been blessed as you have heard songs sung by Amy Grant. If you want meaning and purpose for your life here on this earth, have a cause to serve. Do things that honor your great God. Do things that share the love of Jesus with others. Oh, you have so many opportunities as we begin this new year to do things that really make a difference for God. You can do so many things right here in your own church to care for each other. You can do things that care about people in our community and even throughout the world. Do things that lead people to put their trust in Jesus as their Savior. Have a cause to serve. And then thirdly, to be able to find meaning and purpose in our lives, we'd all have a creed to believe in. Now, there's no better creed that we have than the one that we just said together, and we say every week. It's the Apostles' Creed. In the Apostles' Creed, we say, we believe in God, the Father. We believe in God the Son. We believe in God the Holy Spirit. We believe that we have an amazing God who created us, who saves us from sin and death, and who lives inside of us, helping us to live our Christian lives. That's the creed that we as Christians all follow. For more than 2,000 years ago, people have believed this creed. This creed has motivated people to build churches, beautiful churches like the one we have here, to build schools like the preschool we have here, and to build hospitals as we have so many in our Dallas area. Those are built to show love and care to all people, whether they're rich or poor. Our world is such a better place because Christians have this common creed to follow. The Bible tells us here today that we have been chosen by God to be his sons and his daughters. That's important. That makes us really special in this new year. Commit yourself to living like a son or a daughter of God. Follow the moral code of God. Make the cause of your life to share the love of Jesus with as many people as you can and put your own trust in God. You will find meaning and purpose for your life. You will find that God will bless you with a happy and a healthy new year. Amen.